Hey, and welcome back. We're back in Figma, and this is the same app that we had just built. But I want to give you a couple tips so you can get started on the right foot. When you're thinking about actually creating a sitemap and building off of it, I mean, I want you to think about only the sitemap at this time. I mean, don't worry about crazy user flows that we've been thinking about. Don't go off and try to do two things at once. If you're working on the sitemap, don't start thinking about where to put things while you're thinking about what things to put. So focus on one thing at a time and you'll make way more thoughtful decisions. So you can see that I was starting to think a little bit about this here, but I didn't get too into it right now. I just know that I'm just thinking about basic hierarchy and that's going to help me when I kind of revisit that with those user flows. So don't try to do two things at once. You're going to move well much more slower. So stay focused. Also, use your user flows to help build your sitemap. I have several over here that we've been using. And I honestly recommend that you use these. I mean, you should be using them because they just influence that sitemap so much. They indicate the types of pages you need and where they may fit within your structure. They also reference your user goals as well. So higher priority goals like buying products on our product should be prioritized accordingly. And that's what we've done because of our user flows and our sketches. The next step is tools. You can honestly start with sketching like we did over here. I mean, this really helped us just get started so quickly. But once you start to revise, move it over to an online tool like we did with Figma. You can use any tool. There's a bunch of different tools out there. I use Figma and I think like if you're going to use Figma, just keep it all in one ecosystem so it's so easy to share everything with your teammates and with clients. So move it over to an online tool when you decide to start revising. Another tip is colors i mean we spruce this up and it actually looks pretty fantastic i always use colors in my site maps because they help distinguish between certain things they also make them less boring i mean this is kind of borderline boring but can you imagine if it was something like this where there were no colors at all i mean we can just let's see how it would look if we had no colors I mean, nobody really wants to look at that. Let's just get a sense of what this could look like. So, I mean, this is much worse. So don't be afraid to use colors. I mean, just because it's a sitemap doesn't mean you should shy away from that. You can use colors to highlight things like screens that are visible to certain users like we've done. Also makes your sitemap much more easier to remember instead of just thinking about, about it as like black and white set of cards. It's super boring. Like, look at this. It's harder to remember something like this as opposed to something like this. We know that this is like a member only screen, same with uh, these types of screens. And it'll be easier for others that don't necessarily have the context like you do to remember your sitemap. And my last tip is you don't need to aim for perfection. If you've noticed when I've talked about sketching, when I've talked about user flows and now sitemaps, I mean, once you have a good idea of what your product structure is going to look like, just move on to your wireframes. You don't need to finish this to actually start wireframing. There is no like rule about that. And you shouldn't limit yourself like that. We're working in an industry where we constantly have to create ideas and move quickly. And it doesn't make sense to spend days and days on sitemaps. You could probably spend like not even half a day building one and you can already be on your way to sketching and building wireframes. So just use them as a way to get that view from the treetops and then just get going. And the thing is your sitemap won't necessarily answer all the questions, but it'll give you a good starting point, like I said, for wireframes. And it will bring light to new insights and changes within your story map when you actually start wireframing. So you're never gonna get it right on the first try and don't worry about that. Just be lean. And that's it. Those are the tips that you should probably follow when you actually start wireframing. It'll make your process go by much quicker and it's less pressure on you as the designer to create something like this, which can get you wireframing so quickly. And that's it. Have fun wireframing.